Everything is just getting so bad. So many people just lost. Lost. God needs you to take a stand and to let your light shine. God needs you to make a difference in this community. Here in Joliet, New Lenox, Chicago land, whatever you call it out here, He needs you to stand up and so that other people can see the light of God shining through you. Listen, it is a joy and a blessing to walk in the, in the splendor of God's marvelous light. It's a blessing. It's a blessing that every one of us have because we're His children. Because we're His children. But when we, when we take on the whole armor of God, listen, you can walk. You can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and have no fear of anything. Nothing. Because nothing can stand against you when you have the Lord, when you are fully dressed with the things that He has given you to protect you, to stand. You're making a difference to people in the community. I said this morning in Bible class, when you're like living like this in the Lord, the people in your community are going to want to come and worship Almighty God with you. They're not going to want to go somewhere else. They're going to want to come here and be with you. That's what they want. The world wants something better. And they're dividing us. And they're dividing us over race. Now, you know what they're dividing us over? What is it? The vaxxed and unvaxxed, they call them. People that, that took the vaccine, people that didn't take the vaccine. You know? That's what they're doing. And what is all of that? You know, if somebody's got the vaccine, what are you worried about somebody that doesn't have the vaccine? You're covered, right? You know, we went through the whole pandemic, my wife and I, and we never got the back, we never got the we never got the virus till then the other day we got it. You know? And it got it pretty hard. But God healed us over it. But I want to tell you something. We did go before coming here. We, we were responsible, and for Frank's sake, because we're, you know, we, we love, we love the, your elders. We love Dan. We love you too, Dan. We, we're not staying at your house. <laughs> and you're not having heart problems that we know of. But, but we, we went to the doctor, and we said, hey, doc, we're going to go up to Chicago land, and uh, we, we need to be tested. We, we, need a, we, need a, we need to know if we still got it or we don't. And we tested negative. Praise God. You know, we, we, I said to the doctor, I said, uh, so uh, do I take the vaccine now? He said, no, wait three months. But if I were you, I would never take it, one doctor told me. And another doctor said, give it a year. You've got natural immunity now. You're going to be fine, you know. But they're trying to scare us with COVID and all of this to keep us down, to separate people, to keep people from going to church. It's what they're doing. Listen, this is the devil with his scheme to try to hurt God's family, to keep us down. Listen, there is no disease, there is no disease or anything that can keep you away from the God that loves you, that created you. Amen. In fact, that, that virus was created by some crazy human being. They should be locked up and put in jail. They should. What in the world are people around going around concocting some virus to, to make people sick? I mean, that's crazy. But that's the world that we're living in, brothers and sisters, right now. That is our world. I'm glad I got to see the world a long time ago as a younger person. But you know something? You you guys are teenagers and children right now. Listen. Listen, God loves you. He cares the world about you. God has your back. He does have your back. And just like the angels protected me as I was growing up in, in, in this world, He is. Those angels love you just as much, and they are protecting you, and they are ministering to you just like they do to this preacher or any others of Christ's church. They are still ministering, even to our children. And when our children are mistreated, their angels go before Almighty God and talk to Him about that mistreatment. They do. We love your love. And you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. But you've just got to stand up and put on all of God's armor and don't let anything discourage you. Don't let anybody convince you to not go to church. It was a shame to see and to hear of so many churches closing their doors because the government said, you can't worship. And if you do, 
And they were locking up preachers. I don't know if you heard about this, but there have been preachers that were put in jail or locked up because they were arrested because they, they, they didn't close their church buildings during the COVID pandemic season. Even in the great state of California, there were, I can tell you of some churches of Christ that never shut their doors. And that guy, Gavin Newsom, I know him, you know. I, I, he once invited me to his inaugural uh, as mayor of San Francisco when I was preaching over there. I know the guy, you know. And he's definitely not all that in a bag of chips. He's just not. He's not. But brothers and sisters, you and I, we need to, we need to not let these things that are happening around us scare us. Don't. Up here, young people, there's this little image of, a, of this warrior. You know, do you see yourself like that? The Bible here talks about all of this armor. And, and I want to just talk a little bit about that. It says, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18, it says, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, you see? Are you wearing your breastplate of righteousness today, brother and sister? Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know, did you put on the right shoes? Do you, are you prepared with the gospel of peace? Taking the shield of faith with you, which will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Are you, do you have your shield of faith before you, brothers and sisters? I'm not talking about something something physical, it's a spiritual armor. Because you're dealing not with people, but with the spiritual host. This devil, as we call Satan, this is the one that's the enemy of God. Him and his kind are the ones that you're battling with, not with your brothers, not with your sisters, not with any other human being. It's with these spiritual hosts. So do you have on all of your spiritual armors? He says also to take the helmet of salvation. You know, do you, do you wear that helmet of salvation on your head? Listen, when people are saying evil things, bad things, calling you names, whatever that they're doing, putting you down, you know, whatever, do you, do you just, if you don't have your, your, your helmet on, your helmet of salvation, young people, things will go in one ear instead of coming out the other. It'll just stay right there. But if, but if you have on that helmet, let me tell you something. People say whatever they want to say. It's not going to sink in with you. It's not going to, you're not going to take that in. That's not going to have anything to do with you. It's not going to overcome you. And are you carrying the sword of the Spirit? And the Bible said that the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And apart from carrying, carrying the, the, the helmet of wearing the helmet of salvation and the and the sword of the Spirit, are you praying? Are you praying? The word says, pray. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about these repetitive prayers that a lot of folks say. But are you, are you having a brand new conversation with God through His Holy Spirit? Are you, are you saying something new that He hasn't heard yet from coming out of your mouth that is good and you you praising Him and you speaking with Him? Are you praying for your brothers and sisters with all of your heart in the Holy Spirit? Are you doing that? And are you being watchful to this sin and with all perseverance and supplication for who? For all of the saints, for all of your brothers, for all of your sisters in Christ. This is why we need one another. Listen, we're not living in this world uh, alone. We've got God. We've got His angels. And we have each other because we're His family. We're his family. And because we're his family, we encourage one another. We build up one another. Listen, we don't tear down one another. We don't criticize one another. We lift up each other. That's what we need to work on more and more. If the churches of Christ in this world would start doing more of that, building up one another. Listen, our churches would be growing by leaps and bounds as they did back in the, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, the 1980s. Instead of being in decline since we have since 1993, just everything going downhill, you know, we've been we, we've been riding on the coattails of our of our grandparents and and our fathers and mothers, our aunts and uncles in the faith. 
For too long we've been doing that. We need to step up and do something greater. But you're not going to be able to step up and do anything greater unless you wear the full armor of God. Because it's through Christ that we can do all things because He is the one that gives us the strength to do all of this. He does. Always remember, as you're having difficulty in life, you know, some of you, some of you say, I don't know what the preacher's talking about because my life is great. I never had a problem. But you know what? If that's you, God bless you. I'm glad that there are people that are just having a wonderful time in life without any worries, without any hassles, without any complaints, without any problem. God bless you. You don't tell some of us how you do that. <laughs> you know, Because some of your brothers and sisters might, might need some of that. You know, Don't keep all of that to yourself. When we consider how to stir up one another, that's what we're going to be sharing of each other. You know, you see a brother or sister struggling, listen, help them. It's your job to do that. God wants you to do that. You help someone, and what's going to happen to you? And God's going to help you more. God's going to bless you more. You know, the, the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. And some people say, no, I like to receive more than I like to give. And there's people that live like that, believe me. Even within the church. You know, but but those of you that you give, you know what the you know what the word of God is saying. You understand that. It really is better to give than to receive. It's a great blessing. What I find is the more that I give, the God, the Lord God Almighty sees that and he gives more back. He does that because he loves. But when you're struggling, always remember that God, your holy father, is always within your reach. I like what John wrote to the Christians in the first century. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, he says, You are of God. You see? That's powerful. To know that you are of God. Little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Your heavenly Father, who's Holy Spirit dwells within you is greater than this enemy of God that you know as the devil. Your enemy is no brother or sister. It's no human being. It's this devil that's got it in it to defeat you, to hurt you, to put you down. I'm grateful that Jesus was able to rise up from the dead. This is how special you are. God became one of us through His Son. He did that to become flesh and blood like us. And not only that, but to live and even die for us. You know, the angels, the angels didn't get a second chance. The devil didn't get a second chance. None of his angels got a second chance. They just were condemned. A number of them were sent into the abyss and, and, and are being held down by everlasting chains to this day. And will stay there until the day of judgment. And another group of them, including Satan himself, and his angels, some of his angels are down here on this earth right now. And they've been down here, they've been down here for quite some time. They have. And he's got it in for you. He does not rest. He is relentless. He wants to destroy you. He doesn't want to see you be your best. He wants to take with him as many as he can on judgment day because he knows he, he knows that he's already lost and it's not going to get any better for him but his little sting on us is to take as much of humanity as he can you remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 to 23 Jesus said this not everyone who says unto me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father who is in heaven and many will say unto me that day, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do many great works in your name? And Jesus will say, depart from me, you evildoers. I never knew you. The Lord's going to say that to people. And I'm convinced of this. He's going to say that to people within the church. Because there's a lot of people that are not living as they should for the Lord. They're not on fire for the Lord. They, they don't delight in the Lord. They just have a casual walk with the Lord. Whenever they need the Lord, they call on Him. But if they don't need Him, they're just fine. 
All of those people are the ones that are not doing the will of God. Because God says you're His people. God says you belong to Him. You are of Him. But if you live like you're not of Him, listen, you're going to miss the boat. You're going to miss the, you're going to miss the ride to heaven. To have eternal life forever. You're going to miss out on that. You're going to miss out on that. And I tell you the truth. On Judgment Day, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be crying out to God and saying the same things that Jesus prophesied in the first century when He took on flesh and became one of us. There are people that are going to say the same things that He says that they're going to say. And He's going to tell them, Depart from me, you evildoers. I know ye not. I never knew you. He's going to say that. And believe me, nobody's going to want to hear that. Nobody's going to want to hear it, but they will hear it. Let it not be any of you. You be the ones that the Lord invites you in to His home in heaven. We're closer to eternity today than we were yesterday. We're closer. We're closer to the second coming of Christ than when we first believed, or even when the apostles first believed. We're closer to that day. Eternity is coming. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready for that day? Are you ready for that day? It's the Lord that's calling you today. It's not me. It's not your elders. It's not your Bible teachers. It is the Lord that is calling you today. If you haven't been baptized this morning for the forgiveness of your sins, this is a good day and a good time to do it. There is, there is water, and I believe it's warm, and there's... All the clothing, the towels, everything that you need is ready. I hope I'm saying the truth, brothers. <laughs> I'm assuming that it's all ready. And if it's not, listen, we'll get it for you. We'll get it for you. If you haven't put on Christ in baptism, do it now. Do it today. You know, all you have to do, if you believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God, that's all you have to do is say, I do, I believe, I believe. And you do that, you can be baptized, but it's more than just believing. You know, are you willing to repent? Are you willing to give your life over to Him? And let Him take reign of your life. Let Him be your Savior. Let Him be your Lord, your Master. Are you willing to do that? Because if you are, you don't have to go through spiritual warfare alone. You can do it with God and His angels at your side. If you have any, anything, what it might be, come as we stand and sing a song of invitation.